Okay, so this question says Neptune has some mass. All right, um, it's describing the solar system. So let me just uh, draw the sun. I, I need to doodle so that I have a sense like I understood what the question is asking. And Neptune has some kind of an orbit and it has some mass and it uh, has some distance uh, d from the sun with an orbital period of, oh, yeah. So as it orbit, it, we are given the period. Planetesimals in the outer primordial solar system, we have the take astronomy class <laughs> very interested <laughs> if the primordial class has a had a radius ah oh, that's interesting so they gave us a distance that's uh, on the order of um, 10 to the 9 kilometers and they are saying all this the stuff it comes from uh, let me do a different color it comes from a uh, kind of stuff that was around the sun at even farther distance at a distance of about uh, 10 to the 11 uh, kilometers. And if the matter that made up these planetesimals that later became Newton was spread out evenly on the edges of it, ah, on the edges of it, so they make things simpler. We don't have to worry about um, matters distributed at a kind of overall range of radii. Uh, what was the orbital period of the outer edges of the primordial disk? Ah, Express your answer around it. So you have to think of the kind of the physical processes that led to these um, the stuff that's uh, accreting into here, and you know forming kind of Neptune here, and um, so if you are just uh, seeing the question and don't have any context. What I would normally recommend that you use is conservation law. That's why I left this up here, because <laughs> I thought maybe we would use conservation law strategy. And as you think through it, um, in terms of those planetesimals, what you would be thinking is, um, as they collide and break apart and maybe stick together, energy is not going to be necessarily conserved. And in terms of linear momentum conservation, the sun is basically going to be able to soak up any uh, change of momentum. So what's going to be conserved here is angular momentum again. And you can use conservation of angular momentum to answer this question. But just because we are talking about planetary motion and they are giving us um, And they are giving us periods of these things. Um, oh, wait. Uh, I think we still have to use. Yeah, you're not. Never mind. I was going to suggest using Kepler's third law of planetary motion, but I don't think that's going to work out. Or at least I'm not sure if it'll work out. Um, maybe it will. Let me give this a try. So I'm going to use Kepler's third law to answer it. I'm ambivalent on whether it should work or not. Let me see if it works. If it works, great. We're going to move on. If it doesn't work, I will fall back on conservation of angular momentum because that I feel like I can uh, rely on. And here, I think, yeah, so let me state Kepler's third law. So Kepler's third law says it relates a uh, period of uh, periods and um, the orbital distance of planets. You are comparing two different, two or more planets, and I, I know there are powers of two and three involved. I have to remember which one goes where. So, the things that are farther away uh, move slower. Um, so their period uh, uh, increases more than what you'd expect from longer distance alone. So I think what it should be is period squared is proportional to the orbital distance cubed. So uh, if uh, something's orbital distance doubles, period doesn't just double, it more than doubles. Uh, so when you square, they kind of keep up. So if we have that in mind, then we've been given, so a way to rewrite this expression would be this. Um, if we take the ratio, for example, uh, period of Neptune squared 
divided by orbital distance of Neptune to the third power, that should be like some kind of a solar system constant. So we'll say that's equal to the period of the planetesimals squared divided by the orbital distance of planetesimals cubed. So solving this for the period, I can do that in my head. Period of the planetesimals is the um, the distance of the planetesimals over distance of the Neptune raised to power of, and you have to be careful, I took square root, so it's a power of three halves times period of Neptune. Let's see if that works. Uh, it was in thinking of that solar system constant that I thought, hmm, I think this should work, uh, even though um, it was my first instinct. Let's give it a try and see. So the distance of the planetesimals is uh, uh, 10 to the power of 11 uh, divided by distance of the Neptune is 4 point times times 10 to the power of 9. And kilometers will cancel out of this ratio raised to the power of 3 halves times the period of Neptune, uh, 158.5 years. So uh, that's big. Um, 16,600 years. 16,600 years. Ah, it says that's not correct. Let me make sure that's not a, a rounding issue. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I, I think, no, oh, that's right. Okay, that didn't work. So let's try the other way. <laughs> I, I guess uh, my initial uh, hesitation, I, I should have listened to, to it, it um, because uh, when you, it's, I don't know, I don't know why it wouldn't work, um, but let's just uh, do it using conservation of angular momentum, which I'm fairly sure holds in this uh, situation, so, um, wait, does it hold? It might not hold, because as they, um, let me answer it first, and then we'll talk about if it's the wrong answer or not. <laughs> so conservation of angular momentum. Uh, so what we are saying is uh, we have total uh, angular momentum of planetesimals. That's like the initial angular momentum. We say that should be equal to the total angular momentum of Neptune. Uh, that's like after the billion year, year process. So, um, so the angular momentum is rotational inertia of planetesimals times angular velocity of planetesimals is equal to rotational inertia of Neptune times angular velocity of Neptune. And we can uh, do a little bit of a substitution so when we have an expression like angular velocity, we can say, okay, that's a 2 pi times frequency. Frequency is reciprocal of period, so that's a 2 pi over period. So we can do that substitution here as we are also writing the expressions for the rotation inertia of these objects. You can think of them like a point mass or a thin ring. Either way, the formula ends up in the same. It's a, mass times radius squared. Um, so substituting those in, we have, so mass of the planetesimals, which should be the same as uh, mass of the Neptune, uh, in our assumption, <laughs> r squared times, and now this expression, two pi divided by uh, period of planetesimals. Is equal to, uh, and this radius should be radius of planetesimals, which uh, we were using the letter D. So let's say distance of planetesimal squared. And we have mass of the planetesimals, which is same as Neptune. So I'm going to cancel this out in a bit. Times the distance of Neptune squared times 2 pi over period of Neptune. Um, so canceling these out, um, canceling 2 pi out, I can solve for the period of planetesimals, uh, move that over, move that over, 
move the other thing over, which then gives me uh, dp squared over um, d squared over dn squared times period of Neptune. Yeah, so it's a different expression, so that's definitely going to give me a different answer. So let me just take this. Um, so I have distance of planetismus divided by distance of Neptune, and it's the raised to the three halves. It's raised to power of two. And let me put in the answer. Seven, eight, two, seven, uh, well, um, and I think it'll say it's correct. And let me express uh, my hesitation and doubt. So this one would be the uh, correct answer or the kind of the um, assumption that we would use. So let me tell you the situation where I wouldn't have any hesitation. I would say, oh yeah, angular momentum is conserved. Boom, uh, no second thought, just to just use that. That would be the scenario where a single object, sometimes it's orbit of Neptune, uh, it should, so you think of a very elliptical orbit. So it, at the perihelion of that orbit, it's uh, near the sun at this distance of Neptune. And it's so elliptical that it goes way up at the aphelion of the orbit, very far away from the sun. It has um, this uh, distance of the planetismus. So if we are talking about that, a single object, literally just completing this um, orbit without colliding with anything, then I would say, yeah, that um, if you kind of took, calculate the velocity here, calculate the velocity here, they're going to be consistent with the, these periods that we are dealing with. Uh, this is, is describing comets. Um, here, What I have uh, hesitation on is the process of um, accreting materials into planet. I don't think that process conserves angular momentum in the sense that, um, so all the material that you are starting out with, if you continue to include them in your system, then, um, then, then yeah, angular momentum in that setup is conserved. But in the process of accre accretion, uh, in the process of uh, forming the planet, not all of the initial materials are gonna make into it. Some will, um, some will fall in, some will, uh, it, it, like there's a bunch of different collisions going on. In those collisions, they are transferring angular momentum from one part to the other unless you made sure everything that you started out with made it into that planet, uh, you don't have a guarantee that angular momentum will be conserved. So I think that's where, um, I, I think uh, um, that's where I, my object with on a physicality basis. Uh, let me just uh, do this check. So this is chapter 11, problem 17. Let's just uh, check. Um, uh, I might have to file on errata. Um, 1174. Oh, that would have been the previous question. Oh, that's now one of the questions with answer T. Um, let me see what section it's in. Conservation of angular momentum. So I think the intended um, approach is that um, you are supposed to use conservation of angular momentum. I guess on that basis, let me say that this is the correct answer. The answer I gave is the intended correct answer. And I'll just uh, wrap up with uh, what makes me say uh, that might not be the physically correct answer. Um, so for the purpose of this homework, yes, that is the correct answer. Just treat that as correct. Just let that be. <laughs> um, the reason I believe this particular scenario is unphysical is, um, oh, 
is what we are co going to cover in chapter 13, which we haven't covered yet. I guess that's another reason not to use Kepler's laws. <laughs> so when you look at Kepler's uh, third law, then um, so when you work out expression for period, of something uh, where is it oh, wait they don't have it um so the period of the orbiting body it's a function of two things only um the mass of the body it's orbiting like the in the solar system sun and the orbital distance uh in if you have a kind of a stable orbit so if uh, these planetismals had kind of orbit that's a stable over tens of thousands of years, then uh, to those two pieces of information, the mass of the sun and its orbital distance that determines their orbital period. So uh, we, using uh, Kepler's third law, we calculated, um, we, we calculated one answer. This is the answer assuming uh, uh, assuming Kepler's third law holds, we calculated the one answer. And uh, and this law makes a very few assumptions. It basically assumes a stable-ish orbit. So when we have a different answer, um, this is a different answer. Um, so assuming conservation of angular moment um uh, must be wrong so if i had to bet um, the assumption that angular momentum is conserved in this physical setup i don't think that's correct but for the purpose of the question um, it's in the angular momentum conservation section and you are being pulled to assume conservation of angular momentum so we'll say this is the correct answer and leave it be well, let me just do this thing well uh, because i do own this question so i can actually make the changes to it now so um so it's because i can yeah all right so we did that i'll put in it back um, yeah. so if i uh let me just do a quick test so this is assuming kepler's third law holds and if someone gives this kind of answer, 15820, then what the system will say is, uh, for the purpose of this question, assume that angular momentum comes from the system. And if uh, on that they give the correct answer, they will share my opinion, uh, which is the correct opinion that, um, that the, uh, in this system, I don't think uh, angular momentum is conserved. Over a period of another moment, as a function of um, you'll get a different answer, which should be the way to the angular momentum. As our system is not concerned, either due to other bodies colliding into them or some bodies colliding into them. Okay, so, all right, that's everything.